In a hypothetical situation, let us travel to the year 2070, that is 50 years from now. Now here we see that Ravi is carrying a huge bag full of groceries and other basic necessities. He is walking back home from the market. Now though his home is not too far from the market, but carrying such a huge bag all by himself without any car or bus makes him very exhausted. Now why do you think he has no other choice but to walk back? Why has such a situation occurred? This is because these common conventional sources of energy like diesel, petrol, these fuels have now all been exhausted. Now the exhaustion of these fossil fuels is a result of overuse of these resources. So now there is complete exhaustion of all these conventional sources of energy. What a tragedy. The story that you just heard is nothing less than a tragedy. Can you imagine yourself in that situation? Well, it's nearly impossible. So here we understand the importance of conserving resources that are limited in nature, right? So conservation of energy and power resources is of immense importance in today's world. We not only have to limit our use of limited resources or conventional sources of energy, but we also have to shift to alternative sources that are more renewable in nature and are non-conventional. A very similar situation, an unfortunate situation had arrived many years ago. In 1973, there was a Arab-Israel war in West Asia, right? And this led to oil shortage in America. So in 1973, the war between Arab and Israel led to the cutting down of oil supplies by the Arab oil producers to the supporting countries that were supporting Israel in this particular war. Then at that particular situation, the West industrialized countries realized the importance of conserving limited resources and shifting to alternatives that were more renewable in nature and non-conventional. So this particular war led to the scarcity of petrol in America and it made people realize that importance of conserving conventional energy resources and shifting to alternatives or developing alternatives that were more renewable in nature. So they understood the importance of two things. First, conserving conventional energy resource and developing non-conventional energy resources. However, in recent years, households are believed to account for a large share of the total energy used in a country. So we can say that a major portion of the energy produced in a country is used for domestic purposes. In developing countries like India, use of mud chulhas is done particularly in villages and LPG cylinders are used particularly in cities. So we can say that low income households in Indian villages mostly use polluting forms of energy resources, right? How? So we can see that mud chulhas are used in villages. These mud chulhas usually require a good amount of coal and wood, which are limited energy resources. However, in cities or in places that have high income households, they use LPG cylinders, as I just mentioned, which are cleaner form of energy resources. So you see that energy resources are used in different ways by different parts of a particular country. It was soon realized that self-sufficiency of energy is a drive for new and renewable energy resources. Right. So in the wake of two major oil shocks of 1970s in India, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy was set up in the year 2006. And this was done in order to develop and promote non-conventional sources of energy or renewable sources of energy. 
right so in india people realized that the two oil shocks was a major lesson for the people to not use this limited resources in abundance or wastefully rather limit their use on these conventional resources and shift or take alternatives to new renewable energy resources at present raj kumar singh is the minister of new and renewable energy in india being one of the most populated countries in the world and with the fastest growing economy in the world india is met with fossil fuel consumption energy self sufficiency is realized by india as a drive for new and renewable energy resource so in this graph we see that the generation of electricity is being done by using renewable energy resources in india to a huge extent so from this graph it's quite evident that renewable energy resources like hydro energy wind energy solar energy and biomass have contributed immensely to the generation of electricity where we can say that hydro plays a very important role here however in the recent past wind energy and solar energy are believed to be contributing to the energy capacity of india so we can say that india has increased or made good additions to its renewable energy capacity in the recent years india has started electrification of its villages using renewable sources of energy particularly solar energy a very good example or a good achievement in this particular event is bancha bancha is the first village in india with zero wooden stoves and no lpg cylinders and all its 75 houses rely on solar powered stoves to meet their cooking needs so we see that villages that are remote areas are now fully dependent on solar powered stoves right places that have been electrified using renewable sources of energy this is a great achievement for countries like india so we can see and understand that there's an evolution of renewable energy in india particularly solar wind and hydro energy so from this graph it's quite evident that over the last few decades we see that renewable energy resources have been playing a good role in the thermal capacity of india however we see that the non renewable energy resources are still surpassing the capacity of renewable resources which only means and make it very obvious that our measures are not enough we need to work harder towards this and find better alternatives of renewable energy resources energy in today's world is definitely a challenge even today 80% of the energy produced in the world is done by burning fossil fuels like coal and petroleum which leads to co2 emission which is a greenhouse gas this emission of co2 leads to global warming which has a negative impact on climate and it has a negative impact on weather patterns so weather patterns have majorly changed due to the emission of greenhouse gases particularly co2 other than that our measures are not proving to be enough in providing a healthier environment to us so we need to work harder towards this and limit our use of conventional sources of energy so the entire world needs to understand the importance of energy conservation energy conservation includes two things first is limiting our use of non renewable resources and preventing wasteful use of the same so we not only have to limit our use of non renewable resources or conserve them we also need to prevent the wasteful use of the same other than this another very important fact is that we need to adopt alternative energy resources that are renewable in nature very important so we need to find better alternatives that are renewable in nature and are inexhaustible which can be used again and again right so these two important things need to be kept in mind while moving towards or working towards energy conservation energy conservation also has its important benefits and what are these it sustains the environment so by conserving 
energy, we can sustain the environment. Prolongs the existence of fossil fuels for future generation. So in future, if a situation arises where we face energy crisis, then these reserved fossil fuels can help our future generations. It also saves money. In the previous videos, we have learned that renewable sources of energy, though have high installation costs, but they are cheaper in comparison to the non-renewable energy resources in the longer run. So by this, we can say that conserving energy can save our money too. So before going on to change the world all by yourself, you being a kid must be thinking that changing the world by yourself is very difficult or nearly impossible. But let me tell you, it is possible. If all of us do our own bit, then together in totality, it will lead to a good positive gradual change to the healthier environment and conservation of energy resources. Very simple ways to save energy at home are the following. So we have these simple ways that can be practiced every day or on a regular basis. Turn off the lights and electronic devices when not in use. So if you leave a room, then remember to turn off the lights. If you have also finished using a toaster, for instance, then don't forget to turn off or switch off the toaster. Other than that, we can use energy efficient lights like the LED lights and the bulbs like CFLs. So these bulbs and lights are energy efficient, which means that they use a small amount of electricity to produce a good amount of light. Another two simple ways are carefully closing the water taps. So after you're done washing your hands or washing your utensils or vegetables, you must remember to close the taps tightly so that there's no water dripping from the tap. Other than that, you can plant trees in your own backyard or small lawn or in your neighborhood. So planting trees, carefully closing the water taps, turning off lights and electronic devices and using energy efficient bulbs on a regular basis can help conserve a lot of energy and also keep the environment healthy. Another very effective way of conserving energy is carpooling. Remember in your school days, a car used to come and pick you and your friends from your home and take you to school. What fun was it traveling to school from your home in the same car with your friends? However, you were unaware of the fact, and we all were, that carpooling actually has various benefits and it can help conserve energy to a huge extent. Let's see how. So benefits of carpooling can be as follows. Usable commute time, saves money, and reduces traffic congestion. So take for instance, four of you are going to school in individual cars, right? So there are four cars on the same road traveling to the same place. However, on the other hand, if you all decide to go in one of your friend's car to the same school or to the same place. So you see the space taken by those three other cars is getting reduced and the congestion or the traffic congestion is now less. So you take lesser time to reach your school and there's also less congestion on the road. So these are three important benefits of carpooling. This comes to another important benefit of carpooling and that is less burning of petroleum based fuels. We know that cars run on petroleum based fuels like petrol and diesel. So if you all go in the same car instead of going individually, which means that there is lesser burning of petroleum based fuels and there is lesser CO2 emissions. So less of petrol is being used, which is also saving your money and which is also keeping the environment healthy as there is lesser CO2 emissions. So you see there are good benefits or very important benefits of carpooling. Love the earth? Well, we all love the earth. So what we can do is ride a bike. So why am I relating riding a bike to loving the earth? 
Well, it's very simple. So if you're traveling by cars that run on petroleum-based fuels, then we are causing CO2 emission or greenhouse emission, which may lead to global warming and then a negative impact on the climate. So rather, we can have a better alternative, and that is a bike. Riding a bike has various benefits. Let's point them out. First is less wear and tear on the environment. What does this mean? So the amount of damage caused by cars or bigger vehicles on the environment is comparatively less when traveling by a bicycle. The second important point is zero emission, so no burning of fossil fuels. We know that riding a bicycle is done manually, so we are not using any petroleum-based fuels, which means that fossil fuels are not being burnt. It is a healthier lifestyle to ride a bike, absolutely. Riding a bike is a form of exercise which keeps us very, very healthy. Then, happiness and joy when riding. And we also save energy, the most important point. So as I have been mentioning again and again, that it is manually run. Bicycles are manually run, which means it do not work on petroleum-based fuels. And we are not burning any fossil fuel, which means that we are saving energy resources that are limited, that is petroleum, and there is no emission of greenhouse gases. So burn your calories, but not the fuel. We all know that coal is one of the most important and widely used energy resources in the world. Why? Because it is easily available and it is one of the most efficient forms of energy. However, it is limited in nature and it is a conventional source of energy. So we need to conserve it. So to conserve an important energy resource like coal, a very important method could be used and that is selective mining. So what exactly is selective mining? Selective mining means that the best quality ore should be mined from these coal mines and only they should be used and extracted, leaving the less efficient ores in the mine. So by doing this, we know that in future, if a situation arises where we are facing energy crisis, particularly of coal, then we know that th we have good deposits of ores in the mine, though they are not as efficient as the good ones that are being extracted now. However, they can be at least used by these future generations instead of getting wasted. So best quality ore should be extracted, leaving behind the less efficient ones for the future generation. So selective mining is a good method that should be adopted rapidly to reduce wastage. And these are done by using modern technologies. The other effective ways of energy conservation are installing solar panels on the rooftop. These solar panels can not only help you charge your smaller devices like phone or electronic devices, it can also light up the entire house. These are cleaner forms of energy. Solar energy is a cleaner form of energy as we have learned in the previous videos. And it is much more safer form of energy than the electricity that was produced by petroleum or coal that were limited energy resources. We also can use CNG as a transportation fuel. Another cleaner forms of energy are CNG and LPG that can be used as transportation fuel and cooking fuel respectively. So you see, by taking simple measures, we can save our Earth, we can conserve the energy, and we can become environment friendly and have a cleaner environment. So in this video today, we understood the importance of conserving energy resources that are limited, not only conserving them, but preventing the wasteful use of these resources. On the other hand, we also learned that we should adopt alternative sources of energy that is renewable in nature and that are more cleaner forms of energy. We learned about various examples. We learned about various effective and simple ways that could help us practice these on a regular basis and help us make the environment clean. So as I've mentioned before, ride a bike, burn calories, but not fuel. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.